Hi, I'm Lou Verdugo. I'm with the Cattle Supply Shop staff. Uh, tonight we're very fortunate to have uh, Jay Nicholas with us. Uh, Jay is an avid angler and a well-renowned uh, fish biologist. I am indeed. Is that right, Jay? Uh, that, that's correct. How long have you, you been? Can trust, uh, trust me on that one. How long have you been a biologist? Uh, over 30 years. And uh, over 30 now your years. background is you were with uh, ODFW? ODFW, uh, basically for 30 years, worked for John Kitzhaber, wrote the Oregon Plan with a lot of help. Um, st I've studied salmon, Chinook salmon, in every Oregon coastal stream. Wow. I had a lot of fun doing that. Then, the, then I got stuck behind a desk. But the, the fun part of the career was being out there on the rivers, in the estuaries, where you get to you see the young fish, you see the adult fish, you see the spawned out carcasses, you see the whole cycle of life. Um, a couple things I'm really proud of. One is uh, I did write with uh, Dave Hankin um, a report about, and it's available online for free to anybody who clicks on it. It's uh, Information Report 881. It's about three, four hundred pages. It goes through the science and the historical context of Chinook salmon in about uh, 15 or 20 Oregon coastal rivers. For the serious student of Chinook salmon, that is, in Oregon, that is the resource document. You're here tonight to share uh, some of the things you've learned out there in the estuaries and fishing for these magnificent fish. I can't help but notice there's a, a few flies here uh, there are on the table. Flies. Now, are these your your own personal uh, patterns? Yeah, that you've developed? Every fly here is unique. I personally uh, designed every fly here. Nobody else knows how to tie a good salmon fly. If you want a good salmon <laughs> fly, you got to get one of these out of these boxes for two fifty. Well, no, I, I, okay, okay. Here's here's the truth. There's nothing new out there. Whatever we think is a hot new pattern that we designed, somebody was doing it probably 50 years ago. Um, but, you know, so I use uh, clousers. Now, you're, you've are you tied clousers for quite I'm some love, time. You I'm seem love, to have a... I love clousers. There's a, there's a clouser. The way the fish sees it is like this. Time in different colors, uh, blue back, Put a little pink in there, um, pink, all pink. Wow, those are pretty That's nice looking. That's an awesome little clouser. Now, if I recall correctly, you seem to use, uh, you know, I will say most anglers, but the average angler seems to use like things like a eight or nine weight rod. But you seem to progress to, shall we say, a heavier or stouter rod. Sixteen weight. Yeah, that's about right. Sixteen weight. <laughs> no, no, no. My, uh, my. my Nine and ten weight rods are, are pretty standard for, for salmon fishing. Uh, eight's a little bit on the light side, but you can do it. But what's the length of those rods? Oh, uh, if I'm fishing a one-hander, it's going to be a nine-foot rod, okay. either nine or ten weight. Ten's my preference. But the last several years, I've, I've really gravitated towards using spay rods. So somewhere in that uh, 12 to 14 foot range, and those will be anywhere from rated at anywhere from seven to nine weight spay rods. So let me get this right straight. Yes. You're talking because I catch big fish. They're foot. all giant monster <laughs> chrome. Can you see this? They're the, this big. I never catch them this big. Okay. Uh, and fishing from the beach at Elk River, I probably wouldn't use a 14 foot spay rod. But uh, down in Alsea Bay or Sumets Bay around 101, 14 foot rod, 13 foot rod is awesome. Uh, a lot of those big kings, will, they'll, they'll get under your boat and they will hang there, especially the males. If you've got a big spay rod, you've got more leverage, you got more butt power. You're smiling when I say butt power. Yeah, I, I know you are. Let <laughs> me put it to him, Jim. I, boy, do I put it to him. <laughs> Okay, so that talks about the flies, the rod. What about reels? What kind of reels uh, do you uh, use? Um, <laughs> you have a favorite brand that you like, or you know? Uh, no, no. Nope. Here, here, here are my character. I do like high-end reels because they just flat hold up. Um, I like bigger reels. Right. Um, you know, if if it's in the Ross, say the Ross momentum would be a five. 
uh, Abel would be in the Super 10 uh, or um, probably in the Super 10 range. Tibor, um, the one of the maybe the, even the Everglades. Wow. Um, Ross CLA is a great reel. I, I'll use spay reels. Uh, salmon fishing. Okay. It's important. You got to have a lot of line capacity, and that thing's got to be tough because you're going to beat them up. Well, Jay, uh, I think. So, so, so now wait a minute. Wait a minute. All I talked about was clousers. You got to you got to talk about comments. Yeah. What about some of these others? Yeah. Sometimes this little guy here, that's the one that's going to catch the fish. Sometimes it's this big guy here. Let me get a close up of these suckers. Let me get a close up. There you go. Nice. Don't don't focus on me. I, I'm I'm going to scare people. But the flies are good. So the point is, you match your fly to the water. Clear water, low water, um, concentrations of fish that are being fished over, harassed. This is your fly. When the fish are un, when they are undisturbed, fresh in from the ocean, a larger clouser, you know, a spanker. You know, what's not to like about a fly called a spanker? Yeah, let's get a look at that for one there second. There is an awesome huh. Chinook fly. You fish this in the surf, fish it off the beach. Uh, this is typically a very, it, it's a fly used for really fresh fish. Here's another one I want to mention is, uh, guess what folks? Blue. Blue is the new purple. Ah, okay. You probably heard that before. Blue is a very effective uh, color for, for every species. This is the half chipmunk. And, and, and the reason you're fishing, salmon don't have to have great big flies. You figure in high water, you think about guys fishing quick fish that are 8 inches long, 10 inches long. This is the whole chipmunk fly. It's tied on a Waddington shank. Uh, it's got a Gamagatsu trailer hook. Uh, this is just a standard long shank hook. Uh, use marabou, use rabbit fur. Uh, here is, here are a couple of other good colors. Here's one that's got a knot in it. I've fished this one. I actually think I caught a fish on this. So that's the whole chipmunk fly. And, and, and uh, Chris has got a lot of, a lot of uh, Great flies in the shop here, tied with marabou or um, schlap, schlappen and um, arctic fox, rabbit fur. The point of these things is that they create a big profile. So if you got real murky water, okay. this is what you want. Now, if you throw this thing out there when the water's really clear, salmon are going to run for it, or they'll ignore it, and that's when you want. Oh. I showed you that other little guy. Here, here's a really fun one. It's like so. This is a, a Nicholas original. Original. Nobody's right. ever thought about this. This is yes. like when you run out of everything but crystal oh, flash. I was going to say, I, I, <laughs> you've got a little bit. Is there anything book. else but crystal flash? On no, there? there isn't. So, so the the point of this is that very often, and you can fish this one in the surf too. Very often, these fish, um, they will very often like things that are smaller or more subtle. And if, I'm, if I know I'm around fish and they're not taking this, here's what I'll do. There you go. Sometimes they'll take this one and they won't take the long Oh, that's a good example of innovative fly time. Innovative fly <laughs> time. So now don't, don't anybody, you know, this is highly secret stuff. One of the things I encountered when I started fly fishing for kings was biologists, my peers, who said, Jay, you, those fish aren't biting those flies. You're snagging them. You're lining them. That made me mad. I don't, do I do it? It happens sometimes. But these fish bite flies. And um, it's very important for fly anglers to be ethical, to know the difference between a lined fish and a fish that bit his fly. Um, to release dark fish, uh, I encourage people to release hens for conservation purposes. Uh, I encourage people to release as many of these magnificent fish as they can, as, as they're willing to. Thanks, Luke. All right, you're welcome, Jay. Thanks for coming in.